Welcome to Masters of Self University Podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast. I'm Rachel Fiore. Thank you for joining me today on this episode. We're going to talk about why cheating isn't personal, even though it personally destroys another, probably faster and more horrifically than anything that you could do almost in a relationship. It is one of the top ways that we cause pain and just destroy our relationships and destroy and shatter another person. Um, Can there be more horrific ways, extreme uh, levels of abuse and violence? Of course. Um, But with the extreme, you know, violence or abuse, for example, taken out of it. um, One of the most horrific things that we do in our relationships is we cheat. And so we're going to talk about why that isn't personal. Okay, and we're going to break this down a little bit so that we can understand more deeply. And let me be very clear as I continue that never for one second am I minimizing or justifying infidelity in any way, shape, or form. Never. I want to be very clear as I move forward with that. So why isn't cheating personal? So first of all, this whole notion that has developed over the years of if somebody cheats in your relationship and it's like, okay, so let's figure out what's wrong in the relationship. What's wrong in the relationship is you fucking cheated. That's what's wrong in the relationship. Sorry. I will never, I do not coach in the sense that, well, there must've been something really wrong and that's why the person cheated. No, 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 no fucking way. Do you get to scapegoat or remove the level of responsibility for yourself for choosing to cheat on your partner. You don't get to blame your partner ever, ever, never, ever. Do you get to blame your partner for what you chose to do? Because here is a person who is in integrity, a powerful person, a person who is a loving person. If you are a total jerk off, if you are a terrible partner, male or female, and I, male or female, I, your significant other, can see that you are a shitty, terrible partner. I don't need to lower myself to be a shitty person. I don't use you as an excuse to go cheat. I don't lower myself that way. As a person of integrity, as a person of the way of responsibility, as a person of the way of honoring, as a person of a way of unconditional love for myself... It's I don't reduce myself to that. So no, because you're crappy, I don't get to blame you for my cheating. If I'm a good person, if I am the ways of oneness, I'm somebody who functions from and I'm trying to achieve and become the ways, the universal ways of oneness, then if you really are a crappy partner, I don't go cheat because you're a crappy partner. I break up with you. I divorce you. I leave your ass. And I don't go out into the world and try to date again until I have ended my partnership, my relationship with you, period, end. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go into this garbage of when somebody cheats, you have to decide and figure out and go to therapy to figure out why they really cheated. Here's why they fucking cheated and here's why it's not personal. We don't blame the partner for your cheating. That shit is over. And anybody, any therapist, any coach out there that does that and does those strategies and utilizes those strategies, knock it the fuck off right now. Calling your ass out. It is fucking bullshit that you do that. How dare you victimize the victim twice? That's all you're doing. You're re-victimizing the person who was cheated on. No, you don't get to do that anymore. That's not how this works. If you chose to do that, guess what? This is why it isn't personal, why cheating isn't personal. The person who cheated on you were carrying the wounds and the programs that were created, most likely from childhood, 
way before you ever came into their lives, way before they knew you, way before you ever had anything to do with each other, okay? They probably have cheated before. Think about all of the things that lead up to some to infidelity, to somebody choosing to lie, to sneak around behind your back, to step out of integrity, to lack the level of responsibility, loyalty, commitment in your relationship to you. The like there think about how much goes in, how much manipulation, how much planning goes into cheating on somebody. You didn't fucking do that because of your partner. You did it because you're the asshole. You did it because you're broken. You did it because you're the wounded one who needs the tremendous amount of therapy and healing and coaching that is required to heal the programs, the behavioral programs of cheating. And what leads up to those programs are the inner child wounds that you have and the mental and emotional programs that you run that sabotage yourself, your life, your relationships. Cheating is your fault. It's not your partner's. Stop with the fucking blame game. The lack of responsibility, the first way of oneness, of the universal ways of oneness, read about the universal ways of oneness. If you haven't bought that book and you don't know of the universal ways of oneness yet, buy the book. <laughs> Mason's Way, The 20 Universal Ways of Oneness Taught by the Spirit of an Enlightened Dog. Buy the book and learn the ways. The very first way of oneness, when you look at all of the ways, I'm opening this book right now and I'm reading the ways. Of all 20 ways, the first way of oneness is the way of responsibility. You certainly lack the way of responsibility if you are a cheater. And that has nothing to do with your partner. Absolutely nothing to do with your partner and everything to do with how irresponsible you are with other people's emotions, how irresponsible and haphazard you are with your willingness to harm another person, to destroy another person emotionally. Okay. You lack a level of responsibility, which means you are immature and you are showing up as a child and adolescent at best in this relationship if you are a cheater. So no, you don't get to blame your partner because you fucking cheated. You lack responsibility. You do. Another way of oneness is the way of truth. The way of truth. That is the fourth way of the 20 ways is the way of truth. Now, the way of truth, obviously you lack the way of truth. You're lying, you're manipulating, you're sneaking around. You are most likely gaslighting. Your partner starts to say, you seem discon disconnected. You don't seem... Like you're here with me, like you don't seem present. And um, it seems like something's wrong, like you seem distant. And if they say, is anything wrong? What's going on with you? And you say, oh, nothing. And you're cheating on them. Obviously, you're a fucking liar. You lack the way of truth. You lack the way of truth in that relationship. So you lack the way of responsibility and you now lack the way of truth. So how are you going to blame your partner ever in life for your choosing to cheat on them. This has nothing to do with your partner when you are the cheater. Okay. You're going to hear me say this another thousand times before the end of this episode. For those of you who have been crushed and destroyed through infidelity and cheating, I want you to hear this. Even though it seems like the most personal attack, the most horrific thing your partner could have done, betraying trust to that degree it still isn't personal. I want to hit this home by the end of this episode. Their cheating has nothing to do with you because it doesn't. All right. They lack responsibility. They lack truth. The next way of oneness, they lack presence. They also lack presence. They are also not in presence with the commitment, with the relationship with you. If they are willing to be outside and go outside of the relationship and flirt with, talk to, date, sleep with, have sex with um, anybody else outside of the relationship, okay? So if they're willing to do that and they are choosing to do that, then they are not the way of presence. The way of presence is what do I, how do I show up? Who, who do I show up as in this relationship for my partner, 
for the relationship itself, for myself. When you lack presence, you don't think in those terms. You don't show up that way. To be in presence is I am in a committed relationship that is in the present moment. So what are you doing messing around, giving your sexual attention, giving your attention and, and your emotional attention to anybody else outside of your relationship when you're supposed to be in a committed monogamous relationship? So you lack the way of presence. You also lack the way of connection. My goodness, one, two, three, four. Four ways so far of the 20 that you lack showing up as oneness consciousness, as an enlightened being, as an elevated, highly conscious being, you're starting to lack almost every way so far. The, obviously, there's a lack of connection because you've disconnected from your relationship. You have disconnected from your partner, your spouse. You have disconnected from the commitment. So you are not, you are far from the way of connection. And no, once again, you don't get to blame your partner. Well, I feel disconnected from my partner. I don't feel like my, car, my partner. Me, me, me. Stop using your partner as a fucking excuse for the fact that you're showing up as a horrible, can't even call you a partner, as an untrustworthy, cheating, lying, manipulative person. No, you don't get to blame your partner. We have to understand when somebody commits infidelity, when they choose to cheat on their partner because it's a fucking choice. It doesn't just happen. Get out of here. That lacks the way of responsibility. Get out of here. When you make those choices, you are lacking your divine. You are disconnected from your divinity. No one in their divinity lies and cheats on a partner. No one in their divinity lies and cheats on their partner. No one. There's no such thing as you being in your divinity and you lying and cheating on your partner. There's no such thing. So you are not in your divinity. You are lacking the connection, the way of connection to your own divine self because your divine self would not lie and wouldn't sneak around and wouldn't cheat and wouldn't go behind your partner's back and do this kind of shit. You wouldn't as a divine being. So you are disconnected from your own higher soul, from your own true self, from your own divinity. You are disconnected from your divinity when you show, when you choose to show up and you make these choices because of course it's choice. You also lack the way of compassion. One of the next ways of oneness is the way of compassion. You lack the way of compassion. Why? Because you're not in any way, shape or form selflessly considering the harm, the trauma, the emotional damage that you have caused your partner, that you will cause your partner by cheating on them. So you lack compassion. You lack compassion, not a very loving being, You're not a very warm, loving, nurturing, you know, selfless partner when you lack compassion for the destruction of the relationship, for destroying their trust, for destroying them emotionally when they have made the choice to commit to you and be with you and you're willing to, to cause them that amount of emotional damage because of your choices. So you lack compassion. You also lack the way of harmlessness and gentleness because you're willing to harm your partner because of your selfish, lustful, um, awful, lying, manipulative, dark, shadow self choices. You're willing to cause your partner harm. Now, wow, you're not sounding like a great person so far. And let's see, of, of 20 ways of oneness, we've only gotten up to number eight. I didn't mention the way of patience and the way of surrender, okay? You're obviously, those go without saying. You're not the way of patience, you're not the way of surrender. But the more potent ones that you lack so far have been the way of responsibility, the way of truth, the way of presence, connection, compassion, harmlessness, and gentleness. You're lacking all of that so far. You are not doing a good job as a human so far if you're cheating on your partner. You are lacking a lot of ways of oneness. We're going to keep going. The other thing that this person, so are you hearing me? Hold on, I got to push pause. Are you hearing me, those of you who have been cheated on? Why this is not personal. This has nothing to do with you. This is their lack of divinity, their lack of not embodying enlightened uh, characteristics within them. They are filled with brokenness. They are filled with wounding. They are feel, filled with 
unhealed traumas, and they have a slew of mental and emotional programming that are dysfunctional and unhealthy. This is all about them. It's not about you. No matter how personal it feels, no matter how painful it freaking is, because I know it's goddamn painful, but it has nothing to do with you. Okay? So let's continue here. You also lack the way of equality. Because number one, when you are out there lusting after anybody, I don't care in what form. I don't care if you're addicted to porn. I don't care if you're cheating and sleeping around. I don't care if you're flirting. I don't care if you're gawking and staring, you know, at someone when you're out and about in the world, in the grocery store, at the gym, that's cheating. You are always fucking cheating when your lustful sexual energies are being offered toward, directed towards other people outside of your committed relationship. If you don't want to be committed and monogamous, then don't. That's a choice. Be single. Stay single. Stop causing harm and damage because you lack trust. Because you're not a trustworthy person. Because you don't, you don't um, embody the enlightened characteristic of harmlessness and gentleness. You're not gentle with your partner's emotions. You're not gentle with their... Um, the way that they are going to be treated or the way they're going to feel when they realize how you're treating them, what you've done to them. That's not gentleness. That's not harmlessness. You're causing harm. You're choosing to harm your partner. Okay. So in all the ways that you are showing up as an unhealed, you know, selfish child who damages and harms other people, you're doing that to your partner. This is the reality of cheating, okay? This is the reality of it. So you also lack the way of equality. Why? Because when you are going outside of your relationship and you are lustful outside, when you're lustful at all, lust is not the same as sexual intimacy. It is not the same as healthy sexuality, by the way, okay? So there is absolutely a positive, wonderful, beautiful, healthy, magnificent sexuality, sexual intimacy, that we have, that we can be and choose to be as humans, guess what? You're not it when you are all these other ways. So you lack a quality. Anytime lust is involved, lust, lustful um, thinking, emotions, energy, when you're looking at other people with lust and not a healthy sexuality, sexuality, um, when you're looking at lusting outside of your relationship, that lust is filled with objectification. It isn't lust if there's not objectification in it. So lust automatically is objectifying. If you are objectifying another person, just looking at their body, that, that's all they are to you. They're an object. So they're attractive. They're sexy. Oh, I'm going to lust after that person. Oh, I can't take my eyes off that person. You are objectifying them. Objectification of another person means automatically what you are offering is inequality. Objectifying means that object is inferior to you. It's not objectification if you're not doing that. Hello. Objectification is not a beautiful thing. So if objective, you're objectifying another person, you are automatically carrying the energy and offering the energy of inequality because you're superior, you're making them inferior. No one as an object is anything but inferior to you. Those of you who are objectifying, you are playing the role of superior. You are making that object, that thing that's supposed to be a divine being, by the way, but you don't see them that way. You only see them as a sex object, something for you to get horny over, something for you to masturbate to, something for you to have sex with. That's objectifying. That's objectification. That automatically is inequality. You don't see them as equals because you're objectifying them, which means you're playing the role of superior and you see them as inferior. Now you can understand it. Whether you've ever realized that or not, that's what you're doing. Stop objectifying. There's a clue. Give that a try. Relationships would be much healthier if you stopped objectifying. And then you would, able, you would be able to learn what it means to be in equality in your relationship when there's no longer objectification tainting that relationship, forcing the somebody's superior and somebody's inferior. All right. So you lack equality. Obviously, the next way of oneness is trust, the way of trust. You lack trust. That goes without saying. You can't be trusted in any way, shape or form when you lack all these other ways, the way of responsibility, the way of compassion, the way of presence, the way of connection. How can anybody trust you when you lack all these ways? The way of harmlessness and gentleness. You are not the way of equality. Of course, you can't be trusted. 
you're going out doing all of these things, allowing your ego, your unhealed wounds to rule and dominate who you are, making the choices for you instead of allowing your divine self to make these choices of how you're going to show up in a relationship, how you're going to show up as a human being, the type of human being that you're choosing to be here. You're not choosing to be a good one. You're not choosing to be a healthy one. You're not choosing to be a loving one. And so give me a break. How can anybody trust you? And no, I get asked this question all the time. I always have, probably always will. And it's, okay, but, you know, I, I did it. Shouldn't they just forgive me? I owned it. Oh, mm -mm, no. We'll talk about the way of forgiveness a little bit later. But let me make this very clear. When you have shown up in a relationship as untrustworthy, you've shown, you have proven you are somebody that cannot be trusted. You were lying. You were sneaking around. You were cunning with the way you were covering everything up. You cannot be trusted. Guess what? It is not then your partner's job to learn to trust you again. Oh, whoa. Let me say that again. It is not your partner's job who got cheated on ever in life for the rest of your lives. It is never your partner's job to learn how to trust you again. No fucking way do you get to put that on them. That is not their responsibility to learn how to trust you again when you're untrustworthy. No, uh-uh. The way of trust is I heal myself to where every single goddamn program and wound that I have ever had, that I have ever run, that led me to cheating on you. I have to heal every fucking one of those 100% so that I can show up in life as a human as the way of trust. When I become the way of trust legitimately and not 80%, not 95 fucking percent, it's not good enough. You are not the way of trust if it's 99%. That means you'll still cheat, you still lie, you just don't do it as often. Fuck you. You don't get to do that. You learn how to show up as the way of trust, period, end. And until you are the way of trust, that universal way of oneness, 100%, then you cannot be trusted. How dare you have the arrogance and the entitlement to think someone should just trust you moving forward. You have a lot of growing up to do if that's what you think and believe. And if that's what you have the audacity to expect from your partner, who you fucking cheated on, no way. I am blowing that shit right out of the water. No more do we get to show up in such arrogant, entitled, harmful ways to our partners who we've already cheated on and hurt and crushed in this relationship and have the fucking arrogance to expect them to turn around and forgive you and just trust you from here forward. No fucking way. You don't get to do that. You get to heal yourself so fully, so thoroughly, and so permanently. That means 100%. When you have evolved into the way of trust, your partner will organically automatically as a byproduct over time, be able to trust you again. Why? Because you are actually trustworthy now. How dare you ever act and ask for a partner that you've cheated on to just trust you? How fucking dare you? When you are not yet a trustworthy partner, you are not the way of trust. If you still have unhealed wounds in there that led you to cheating to begin with, how dare you? You don't get to ask your partner to trust you again. It is not his or her job to trust you again. Never is it their job to trust you again. It is your job to heal and elevate to the level of the way of trust. When you can heal and elevate to the way of trust, that is now the divinity that you are. That is now the divine being that shows up every second of every day for the rest of your life effortlessly as the way of trust. There is no choice for your partner but to trust you because you're trustworthy now. 
Don't you ask them to trust you when you're still not trustworthy. So you don't get to do that. Now, the next way of, of oneness is the way of honoring. And it goes without saying you did not honor your partner if you cheated on them. You did not honor the relationship. You didn't honor trust, connection, harmlessness, and gentleness, truth, compassion, all of it. You didn't honor any of these things or you wouldn't have cheated. So it goes without saying you lack the way of honoring. So there's another area to heal in order to evolve into a person that is not a cheater, that is not a liar and a cheater, okay? The way of loyalty. We're going to jump to the way of loyalty. Yet another way of oneness is the 13th way of oneness. Come on. What are you loyal to? And it isn't just loyal to your partner. It isn't just loyal to the relationship. It isn't just loyal to those things. It's not just loyal to the commitment, whether you are officially, formally married or not. It doesn't matter. You're in a partnership. So it goes without saying that you lack the way of loyalty. But what you are loyal to, you are loyal to your wounds, your shadow self, your ego, your programs, your self-sabotage. All of the programs that you run that led to cheating to begin with, that's what you're loyal to. So you have to be able to question and awaken enough to see what you have actually been loyal to this whole time. You have not been loyal to um, your divinity. You have not been loyal to your own growth. You have not been loyal to your own healing or you wouldn't have fucking cheated to begin with. Right? So obviously you lack the way of loyalty. And what you've been loyal to are your shadow self programs, your ego, your wounds, your self-sabotage, all of that, all of your unhealed stuff. That's what you've been loyal to, right? So it's time to learn an enlightened definition of the way of loyalty and become loyal to your own healing, your own elevation, your own growth. Because when you are the way of loyalty, that automatically is what you're loyal to. You're loyal to your own healing and elevation and growth so that you are no longer somebody who causes harm, no longer somebody who is so harmful and so willing to selfishly choose some, you know, dopamine fix, some quick dopamine fix by lusting after somebody else and cheating versus being loyal to your partner with selfless love, right? So the next way of oneness, number 14, is actually the way of unconditional love. Now, some people will ask the question, but okay, so what about when your partner cheats? Like, isn't it unconditional love to, to heal with them and move through this together if you choose to stay together, etc.? So listen, let me make something very clear to you. Unconditional love is without conditions. That does not mean you get to lie and cheat and sneak around and be untrustworthy and be a piece of shit as a partner, and then I'm supposed to be a doormat. That is not what unconditional love is. That is not what unconditional love is. That is never what unconditional love is. Unconditional love is power, and that includes setting healthy boundaries, requiring your partner, if we're going to stay together and work through any of this, you have to get coaching or therapy or a professional level of help, you know, to whatever degree in order for, that is a, that's a, that is, that's an aspect of unconditional love that may be confusing for people, but I am willing to love you through this as long as you are willing to love yourself. And what does love yourself mean? Unconditional love for yourself means you're willing to get the help you need to stop being such a fucking asshole in this relationship. That's the easiest way I'm going to put it. So if you want your partner to stay with you for some reason, the one that you've cheated on, you don't expect them to. If you want them to, if you want them to love you unconditionally, despite the fact that you just fucking destroyed them, just ripped their heart out into a billion pieces, if you want them to stay with you in this scenario after you've been unfaithful, 
then you have to love yourself enough to get the help you need to stop harming your fucking partner. And even that has nothing to do with your partner. Not yet. You're not selfless enough. You're not healed enough yet. You don't love yourself enough yet to actually love your partner or do this for your partner. When you get help and you get healing and you elevate yourself, guess what? That is never for your partner, at least not at first. You're too fucking selfish to do that for your partner. You don't heal for another person. It never works. It will fail. You don't heal yourself for someone else. That doesn't make any sense. You heal yourself for you so you can be proud of you. So you can go to bed at night and say, I love who I am. I am a good person. So that you on your deathbed, whether that's next week, next month, or, you know, a hundred years from now, when you are on your deathbed and dying, you can look back at your life despite any mistakes you've made and say, I am so in love with who I showed up as in this lifetime. How many of you can say that about yourselves? Oh, oh. I mean that question and I'm giving the pause for a reason. How many of you can say from the bottom of your heart, I love who I am. I really love who I am. No, that does not mean you're perfect. That's ridiculous. Nobody's fucking perfect. It doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you don't fail at things. How many of you can say, I absolutely love, and I mean, I am in love with who I am, with who I've become in this lifetime, with who I am right now. I love who I am. How many of you can say that? And that is not a question of shaming you, by the way. Don't you dare misinterpret my teaching. I'll call your ass out real quick. It's not about shaming. It's about if you cannot, and be honest with yourself. Because a lot of you, the honest answer is, well, no. <laughs> I can't say that I am really in love with myself, that I really love who I am. Some of you can. And a lot of you cannot. And the next question is, if you cannot say, I am so in love with who I am, absolutely love who I am as a human, as a person, as a partner, as a woman, as a man, as a spouse, as a mother, as a father, as a human being, period. I love who I am. And if you cannot say that you, that that's true for you, one, and guess what? 100%. Not, well, that means no. The answer is no. Well, I mean, no, then the answer is no. If you can't say that 100%, then the answer is no. Okay? And that's okay. That's not shaming. That's not judging. That's not criticism of any kind. It's awareness. So the next question is then, why can you not say, I am so in love with who I am? Why can't you say that? So what is in there unhealed? What is in there inside of you that needs to be seen, that needs to be validated, that needs to be healed, that needs to be elevated in order for you to turn around and be able to say, after you've done that healing work on yourself, so you can turn around and then say, I do really love who I am now. I really love who I am now. Okay, that, that right there, that shows you the work you need to do on yourself. It's not about what other people think of you. It's not about other people loving you and accepting you and validating you. Get the fuck out of here. That's powerlessness. That's codependency. It's bullshit. Grow up, rise above that, elevate yourself to a level where no matter who out in the world likes you or dislikes you, loves you or hates you judges you, criticizes you, or accepts you and validates you and gives you the accolades. It doesn't fucking matter. None of it matters. Why does none of it matter? The only thing that actually matters is that you get to look at yourself, who you show up as, how you show up in every damn scenario in your life, no matter what it is, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, beautiful, blissful, horrific, scary, terrible, tragic, that you are showing up in a way that says, I love who I am. Through this tragedy, I love who I am through this. And when you have a moment of conflict or challenge that says, I don't love who I am, that's where you need to do healing. 
that is self-awareness and that's the way of responsibility. Okay, so we're going to jump to the way of integrity. We're going to jump to the way of integrity. I mean, come on. It's not rocket science at this point. You lack the way of integrity if you're freaking cheating or you have cheated. That goes without saying. I will tell you the way of integrity out of 20 universal ways of oneness, the way of integrity is number 16. It is up there real high on the list. You need to become and be able to achieve a lot of ways of oneness before you can actually call yourself an authentically divine definition of integrity, that I am an integrous being. It takes a lot to achieve that level, the divine definition of integrity. And obviously, if you're lying and cheating and willing to harm your partner, you're not, right? So that's another way of oneness that we're lacking when we cheat. Wow, when we are cheaters, we are really not great people. <laughs> we lack so much divinity when we choose to cheat and cause this kind of harm. The next way of oneness is the way of forgiveness. And it is... The way of forgiveness is, is way number 17 out of 20. And the way of forgiveness, I'm going to say this just like I said with the way of trust because it is true here. It is not your partner's job to forgive you if you fucking cheated. It is not your partner's job to forgive you. Nope. Nope. And nope. So when we carry unforgiveness resentment, for example, for our partner cheating, one of the main reasons for that, listen up, one of the main reasons why I, somebody who's been cheated on by my partner, whoever you are, man or woman, I don't care who you are, okay, I'm going to represent all of you right now, somebody being cheated on, okay, when I still, no matter how long it has been, Two days, two years, 22 years later. Can't you just forgive already? Let me, un let me make you understand, or at least try to guide you into understanding of what's happening here. Number one, you yourself, the person who's been cheated on, either you yourself have not honored your pain enough. So it hasn't healed yet. The pain of being cheated on has not been honored enough by you in order for it to be healed and gone. When you have learned what it means, and this is energetics on an energetic level, this is, this is also exactly the tools and everything and the strategies, the skills that we teach you at Masters of Self University, by the way, in all of our coaching, all of our coaching programs, one-on-one -on -one or relationship coaching, this is what we teach you how to do to gain this skill, okay? It is an energetic process of alchemy. In order to learn what it means to alchemize your pain, you learn what it means to honor it. So this isn't just, these aren't just words. It's an actual energetic process that you learn from our coaches if you get coached by, by MSU coaches, by the way. I want to be clear on that. It's not, about, oh, yes, I honor my pain. It's not about you saying the damn word. That doesn't do shit energetically. It doesn't. So I want to be clear on that because some people will get stuck on that. I'm trying to honor my pain. No, it is actual. It is an actual energetic process to honor your pain. And only when you've achieved that 100%, everything is then alchemized on an energetic level. And guess what? When it is alchemized on an energetic level, guess what happens? Organic byproduct that is forgiveness because there is nothing left to forgive. When you still have pain because of, because of um, what your partner did to you because your partner cheated on you, when you still have pain, you will still have unforgiveness. Let me say that again. I want you to hear it. If you still have pain, from being cheated on, you will also still have unforgiveness. Forgiveness cannot energetically happen inside of you if you still have the pain in there from being lied to, cheated on. Do you understand? So more pain needs to be healed fully 100%. An organic byproduct of that is forgiveness arises out of you.
So that's one reason, that is one possibility of why, no matter how long it may have been, why you don't forgive your partner or why your partner still doesn't forgive you for cheating and you've been to therapy 20 times and it's been, you know, 22 years and it's like, can you get over it already? Ooh, ouch. Mm -mm. So here's the second thing. Here's the second option. The partner who cheated hasn't fucking honored your pain enough at all. Because this is one of the biggest mistakes people make. Even if they go to therapy and they do some things to try to heal and elevate, what they also do, they don't know what it means to honor the pain that they caused you. This was not my pain. I didn't have it here before you came along, you fucking asshole. You caused this pain inside of me. It is my job to heal it, yes. But when your partner over and over and over and over again, the partner who cheated on you doesn't honor your pain that they fucking caused. What they are doing is they're actually to some degree recreating the cheating over and over and over again. Pause this, rewind, listen to that again. What they are doing, the person who cheated, when they have not learned what it means to honor your pain that I caused you because I cheated on you, when I'm not learning how to honor your pain 100%, I am recreating a degree of cheating. It's like reliving it over and over and over and over again. It's like I'm doing it to you again. Because I don't know what it means to honor the pain that I fucking caused you. And that pain inside of you is 100% my fault. Because I'm the one who fucking cheated. Okay? So that's number two. Why we, we can't forgive and can't get over it even though we've really tried. Because your partner who cheated is often, almost always by the way. Oh my God, get over it already. Oh, fuck you. You just recreated a degree of trauma when you do that, when you act that way, when you're dismissive, when you act like the person should just be over it already because it's been a long time. Fuck you. Learn what it means to honor the pain and the harm that you caused because you are the one that caused it. They, I didn't cause this to myself. You caused it. So you're recreating that to some degree over and over again to your partner when you are dismissive and you want them to just get over it. Okay. And you just want them to forgive you. How selfish of you to want your partner to forgive you when you're the one that fucking lied and cheated to begin with. How selfish. So until we learn how deeply we hurt people and how, how the many layers that we create of pain and harm to other people by our choices and actions, until we really learn this and have such an education about this. Now, a lot of you listening to this can understand why it's been such a struggle. Okay. Because all of this that I've spent 42 minutes so far going over is why people can't heal in their relationships from infidelity. It doesn't mean you cannot heal. I'm saying it's why you haven't healed yet. Okay. You, you get the understanding, the education of this on all these different levels. You start to then understand on a deeper level, why I haven't really healed yet. Why we haven't healed yet. Okay. So you understand all of this. Mm, now, now, now we can start to actually shift to healing. All right. So I'll just mention very briefly, because I'm going to wrap this up. Um, of other ways of oneness, um, the way of purity. Uh, we are obviously lacking the way of purity. That goes without saying. Don't need to go into that one. Nowhere fucking near the way of purity when you're cheating on your fucking partner. The way of wisdom, obviously you lack wisdom because you have no fucking clue of how damaging and how hurtful, how harmful this actually is to another. And obviously you don't care. And I didn't mention the way of selfless service earlier. I, I skipped over that one, but you're not in selfless service to your partner when you're willing to hurt them, lie to them, manipulate you know, cheat on them. You're not in selfless service to the relationship or to your partner when you're doing any of this. So let me just mention that real, real quick. And then the, the 20th way of oneness is the way of harmony. And obviously you're disharmonizing, you are in disharmony, but you're also 
as a verb disharmonizing your relationship and your partner and any connection that you have, you're in disharmony with. You're creating disharmony when you're lying and cheating. So when you understand all of that, all right, you understand all of that, you can understand why it takes a lot of work to heal something like this. It takes a lot of work to heal something like this. I'm sure you have heard people out there tell you, um, for those of you willing to do the real work, you can actually have a very powerful and even the most incredible relationship you've ever had with anybody. You absolutely can have that as a result. That absolute truth in there. Okay. But where I've seen people struggle and fail in this over the years and the more than two decades that I've been doing all of this is, um, they don't understand what is actually happening. They get, they want to, they want to race and get real quick to the end result of having it be happily ever after again. And that right there sabotages your ability to have happily ever after. You can't do that. You literally are blocking and preventing and even forbidding any healing to actually happen within yourself and within the relationship and within your partner when that's how you treat infidelity. All right. So there are strategies. Everything that we teach at Masters of Self University and our relationship coaching especially goes into the deep programming that led you to the infidelity to begin with. And then we learn how to become really powerful in our energetic ability to alchemize those programs, those wounds, heal them. So they are not a part of who you are and how you show up in this world anymore. If that's not how you show up, that's not who you are any longer at an energetic level, then it can never again be what you offer your partner. Never again can you harm your partner in that way when you learn this level of work, all right? So this is why I've gone through almost every single way of the 20, if not all 20, we are failing at becoming, we are not any of these ways of oneness when we cheat. So really think about that. So if you learn about the ways of oneness and you learn about how to become those ways, as you become each way, you are healing every single wound and program that is lacking that way of oneness, which means you are healing at the soul level which means you are showing up without even trying anymore as a divine person who couldn't harm another, who couldn't lie, who couldn't cheat, who couldn't destroy another person emotionally. You literally are not capable of being that anymore on this planet in this lifetime when you learn what it means to become the ways of oneness. Okay, so you have several options in order to help you if you are struggling with this. If you are a person who hasn't healed from being cheated on, and you may not even be with that partner anymore, or that spouse, maybe you got a divorce, maybe the relationship ended, but you also carry the wounds with you and you know that affects your ability to date or be in, a, in an intimate, loving, wonderful relationship again because you've been so damaged. That might be you. And if it is, I really strongly encourage you please go to mastersofselfuniversity.com. Schedule a free consultation with one of our coaches. Schedule a consultation with our certified relationship coaches if you would like relationship help, all right? We offer help at the deepest level that humans have access to in this lifetime. And I mean that literally, okay? So use our free consultative surfaces in order to discuss these things with a coach, get the help that you might need. Also, Buy the book, Mason's Way, The 20 Universal Ways of Oneness Taught by the Spirit of an Enlightened Dog. At least get yourself an introduction to understanding and reading about the ways of oneness and how to become them. And then finally, you can also, in January 2023, our university classes are opened up and they are ready for you to enroll. And one of those classes is Introduction to the Universal Ways of of oneness. So sign up for the classes that will empower you 
that will heal you, that will guide you through self-actualization and enlightenment and teach you the science of energetics, the science of alchemy, so that you can truly permanently heal. We welcome you. We are here to be your guides and your support through all of those levels of healing that we are professionals and experts in. So we open our arms and we welcome you. Thank you for joining me. Please hit that like button. Please share with everybody that you know, and especially with somebody who you know may benefit from hearing this. Thank you for being with me today. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye for now, everybody.